Honeywell had their earnings this morning, uh, and and net net, you know, they beat EPS by by one percent. It was a uh, revenue miss by about two uh, percent, and you know, in, in pre trading right now, uh, it's looking about even to about down one uh, percent. Yeah, the the headline that you get from Honeywell and the headline from the street are a little bit different here. Um, I look at a company with the long, deep industrial roots growing, having 9% jump is a pretty healthy jump. I mean, we got to weigh in for inflation right now. Um, you've got to weigh in for the economic situation. Uh, but this is another example, a little bit like Intel, where it's like you're still growing and that's good, but the street, um, we'll see how they respond. I think it's, it's going to be less volatile for Honeywell. <laughs> Um, you know, the reason I think we keep coming back to Honeywell, besides uh, the fact that we've had the benefit of having a lot of access, being able to talk to their CEO, Darius Adamchek, working with their quantum team, uh, getting to know the Forge business is that, you know, we, we it's kind of a, a little bit of a broken record, but it hasn't seemed to be fully appreciated by the market yet as Honeywell is an industrial company that's in, in a significant transformation to a technology company. That's right. And so every time I, I will look at the quarterly numbers, what I'm kind of trying to do is get an indication of how well that transition is going. And so when I looked at this quarter, you know, to me, you know, this is still a company that's very balanced. We've got uh, the quantum business uh, being spun off with CQC. Um, but, you know, across it, you've got these uh, SaaS applications for safety and productivity. You've got Forge for the, you know, the edge and IoT for manufacturing. You've got the technology business for um, the buildings. Uh, you look at something like return to work and where does a company like Honeywell fit in? And all I can say is, I mean, we're going to be absolutely hyper dependent. And then you start to look at areas like um, ESG, Pat, which you and I love to talk about. Um, and, you know, when you start to think about how a building provides, uh, you know, uh, cleanliness, uh, environmental meeting environmental standards, um, safety for people who enter and exit these buildings, and the footprint that companies leave. Uh, you know, you, you're, we're going to be looking to companies like Honeywell to be building solutions that are going to integrate with, uh, you know, I talked about ServiceNow last week, or Salesforce, or Microsoft, or Amazon, or any of these companies, or Google, who are building these ESG footprints. This data that's going to come off of all of these edge and um, geographical buildings and locations and jet engines and <laughs> it, it's going to be really really interesting so well overall you know i'll be i'll be candid you know trying to find uh, as much to talk about in the tech end of honeywell as there is to with an intel or an ibm is still a little bit hard it's a little bit nascent for me but i think the real story here is is the company making that leap we keep talking about it. And so as I look at this, you know, you see 3% up on building solutions, but then you see like productivity, Pat, jumping 21%, right. which is where a lot of the software lives um, for the company, workflow solutions, productivity solutions. Um, so you're starting to see indicators that the investment in these technologies at the edge and within these buildings are growing and that Frankly, I think Honeywell's in a really interesting position, but you're right. They did miss what the street was looking for. So even though they grew 9%, not quite enough to make all happy. But in my opinion, those are the things we should be looking for. We should be looking for where's the growth in software. And, and I'll be candid, Pat. I keep putting pressure on, on, on the team over there. You guys have to start breaking this tech out. We need to know more about Forge. We need to know more about... Uh, um, uh, the building tech, the actual application investment that's going in, uh, especially now with quantum, you know, spinning, because that was one of those really strong disruptive technologies they were investing in. And although they'll still be invested in it structurally, it will no longer be under that broad Honeywell ticker. So that's kind of what I think. Uh, and I think uh, I'm really hopeful that your eyeball there doesn't <laughs> muck in you too much. Yeah, sorry about that. I was considering uh, taking myself out of the stream, uh, but, uh, you know, we're live you're drinking a monster. I'm drinking from my my Starbucks here. By the way, no, we are not being compensated by any of those companies. Wish we were. I'm just, I'm just thirsty. Exactly. Uh, listen, uh, Honeywell's an industrial that that is branching out uh, into tech, and I'm amazed that that they grew at all. Uh, they need real materials to grow, <laughs> right? And guess what? We're, we're in a massive supply chain uh, challenge. So a lot of the things. That, that Honeywell has to make out there 
relies on the supply chain that is currently uh, completely uh, messed up and not just electronics, but steel, right? Things like plastic uh, and, and things like that. So I am amazed and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the CQC Honeywell uh, merge and spin and just to see kind of the value in, and I believe Honeywell is going to have 51% still uh, of that deal. So I guess it's not a full, uh, necessarily a full spin, uh, you know, similar to something like a, like a Kindrel, but uh, I think there's a ton of value there. And, you know, I'll get back to INQ that set the, uh, set the bar and it is likely that Honey, Honeywell uh, and CQC has at least as much revenue as, as INQ, which, and that, you know, I think we could pretty much safely say that the street is is giving Honeywell zero credit for uh, quantum right now.